Hello everyone, and welcome back to Steins Gate Linear Bounded Phenogram. I'm G, and we are working our way through the Mulka route. Uh, currently she is working as a rounder for CERN, and is uh, being ordered to investigate the Future Gazette Laboratory. Uh, Myri was nice to her, and now she's like, what the fuck, FB, why are they bad? But anyways, let's get started. It was morning before I knew it. I feel like I slept pretty well considering I was sitting on the floor all night. Without realizing it myself, I must have been pretty tired yesterday. Huh. Oh, a message. Try destroying the time machine again today. I'm sorry for giving you such difficult tasks. If you find it too hard to get the job done, it might be wise to try and turn someone related to this development against them. Gee. My chest hurts a little. A strange feeling I had last night is still somewhere deep inside of me. FB's right. She's never wrong. But... Uh, I can't help but sigh. I don't have time to hesitate like this. Like FB said, I should distance myself from the people related to the development of the time machine. When I get close to the lab... You have a grudge against me or something? Not really. Then why are you always glaring at me? Maxi san and Amani-san, part-timer from the Brown Tube Workshop, if I remember correctly. Two are arguing over something. I think it's pretty rude to be like that if you've got nothing against me. Who is it? Good morning, Maika san Are you coming to the lab today? I was really happy I got to talk with you yesterday, so it'd be super nice if you came to the lab again today! Good morning, Shina-san. I was actually thinking about going to the lab today. Headed there now, Moika. Good morning, Shina-san. I really enjoyed talking to you, too. I hope we can do it again sometime. That one! Okay. Yeah. Well, it's not like I don't have a reason. And how about telling me into my face? Fine. We'll do it your way. Mexico cares who you know what CERN is, right? CERN? How does she know about CERN? I'll be direct with you. I think you're a spy from CERN. Like I say, son is a spy. From CERN? What's going on? Nobody told me anything about this. There was nothing like that in the personal info that FB sent me. I hurriedly type up an email to her. Urgent confirmation. I overheard Amani-san asking Maxi-san if she's a certain spy. Is this the case? Please reply as soon as possible. Her reply is immediate. Is Maxi Kurosu a certain spy? No, that's no truth to that. The lab members must be putting on an act to try and draw you out. Be careful how you react. I knew it. Maxi-san being a part of CERN is some kind of misunderstanding. If she really was a spy, FB would have told me before I got started on this mission. Then why does Amani-san suspect her? I might have to ask her directly. Um. Oh, you son Good morning. Head to the lab? Why don't we go to get... Something I want to ask you. Huh? Are you two just talking about CERN? Is it true? True? Yes, about you being a spy from CERN. You heard that? I nod slightly. Don't tell me you believe this silliness, too. Did you hear from Okabe or Hashita? Okabe-kun? Hashita-kun? What do they have to do with this? Yes, yeah, true that CERN is doing research on time machines without paying regard to any particle research institution. What? I can say Karasu, I knew it. You're... Hold your horses. What is it? Guess we were both thinking the same thing. Let's talk a lot more. Yay, Mayuri! Okabe had Hashi to do a little bit of hacking, and I just happened to be there. That's how I know. Kidding. Even a rounder like me didn't know that much. The only thing I was told is that the rounders are an unofficial subordinate organization of CERN. CERN is researching time machines. Does FB know this? Use common sense. There's no way I could be a spy from CERN. I've never even been to Europe, befo Europe before. I don't care whether Makisei san is a spy or not at this point. It's a more pressing issue. She and the others have discovered one of CERN's secrets. One that even I didn't know. Anyway, like I said, I have nothing to do with CERN. 
There shouldn't be any reason for you to hate me, Amani san. Amani san seems dissatisfied with her explanation. Kiyomaka, yeah? Yes? Even if she isn't a spy, you should be careful around Maki Sekirisu. Then disappears into the brown tube workshop. She knows something about CERN too? I want to ask her for more details, but then I'll have to wait for another time. For now, I'll stick with Makise san. I need to ask her more. Makise san, what do you think about what she said? I'm the one who should be asking that. Why the hell would a Makise san think I'm a certain spy? Your father is the time machine re researcher, Dr. Nakabachi, right? That might be why she doesn't trust you. That's this all might be related to the rumors that CERN is researching time machines. Moaka. Huh? Wait a second, how did you know that my father is Dr. Nakabachi? I work part-time at an editing company. Oh, I see. In that case, Amani san must have also figured out that at some point. She probably assumed there was a connection between my father's research and CERN's. I get it now. Yeah. It's true that my father's researching time machines. But if you were to ask that if, the, if that connects me to CERN at all, then the answer is no. Plus, I'm not doing this research at the lab for him, let alone CERN. I'm doing it to satisfy my own curiosity. I see. It doesn't seem like she's hiding anything. But you know, I wonder if that's even true. I can say San starts to mutter to herself. Huh? I know I said my research isn't for my father, but... Maybe I just want him to recognize my abilities. Her words are barely audible. I don't think she wants me to respond. Nonetheless, I nod my head. I understand that feeling. I can say San opens her eyes wide. You do? I want to be needed by someone who sometimes work too hard. I snapped my senses after saying all of this. I've basically divulged my relationship with FB. Considering how smart makise san is, it's entirely possible that she'll piece things together. Ah. Uh, no. Don't read into that. Hey, <laughs> Thanks, Kiryu-san! For some reason, makise san happily laughs. I was kinda happy. Happy? Why? Well, there's just been a lot going on lately, and... I guess I'm just happy that someone else understands how I feel. I reflexively avert my eyes from Makise san's straightforward gaze. I'm going home for today. Huh? Wait, Kiryu san! Her eyes were so serious and earnest. Even after returning to my room, I can't get Makise san's happy face and words of gratitude out of my head. And just like that, I'm on the roof. Step back in surprise, but a fence bumps against my back. Ah, right. I climbed over said fence so I could stand on the edge of the roof. I'm tired of everything. I'm tired of curling into a ball in my room. If nobody would notice my death or even be sad, then why not? I could take my cell phone out from my pocket. For some reason, I felt like maybe it'd give me a reason to step back. However, new messages. Zero. Of course. I haven't gotten a new email in years. Why did I think this has changed anything? I tilt my head in my own naivete and toss the phone away. I watch it disappear into the city far below. Will the same thing happen to me? Will I become so small that I can't be seen? Eventually vanishing entirely? Be okay with that. It's better than holding up in my room. I leap from the roof, almost like I tripped. Then suddenly, something warm grasps both of my hands. Without any time to react, I'm pulled back up. Two people have grabbed me. Now those people are holding me tightly. They won't let go. Why? Why would you stop me? I just want it to end. Please just let me end this. I'm happy you came here, Moaka san. The person grasping my right hand speaks. Thanks, Moaka san. The person grabbing my left hand continues. My voices are so gentle. My hands are so warm that it makes me want to cry. Before I realize it, I am crying. Crying like a child as the two mysterious people completed all my hands. 
grab back as though clinging to them, and speak in a voice hoarse from all the crying. It's okay for me to live? It's okay for me to be here? I suddenly jump up. I think I was dreaming. I can hardly remember what the dream was about. Realizing my cheeks feel tense, I reach up to touch them. They're wet. Was I crying? I can't remember. My cell phone off to the side notifies me of a couple of new emails. I hurriedly flip it open. From FB and Okabe-kun. About the time machine. You didn't send in a report yesterday. Is everything okay? Did you try causing dissent among the lab mems? I realize that that's not something that can be accomplished in a single day, but please continue looking for an opening to destroy the time machine, whilst also causing dissent or unrest between them. G. Look at Bakun's messages. Today's plans. What are your plans today? There's something I want to ask you. If possible, can you drop by the lab around 12? I know. I'm a rounder. I'm four. Not a lab mem. I decide to ignore Alcapicun's email and reply only to FB's message. She's the only person I can trust. I'd do anything for her. Understood. But it appears as though Makase-san, Okapikun, and Hashitakun all know Cern's true nature. Apparently they used hacking to find out. Then why? Why am I having trouble pushing the send button? I have an uncomfortable feeling deep inside my chest. But why? I take a deep breath and finally manage to hit the send button using two fingers. Fucking away on my phone, I stand up. It's time to head back to the lab today. I have to carry out FB's orders. Oh, well if it isn't Shining Finger. Come on, Ogreen, she's not Shining Finger, she's Maka-san! Only okabe and Shina-san are at the lab today. <laughs> Welcome, Shining Finger! You're three minutes past your scheduled arrival time, so I assumed you had fled in fear. Sorry I'm late. I mind not, Shining Finger, for everything is the will of Stein's Gate. Sorry. Well, huh, huh. Uh, want a Dr. P? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I see. Okay. Oh, Green, you're too nervous. Uh, I see. Okay. Repeating yourself. So what do you want to ask me? Hmm? Oh, well, you know, uh... First, take a seat. What could it be? Okay, Ken's more inarticulate today than usual. Gosh, please sit down on the sofa. Sorry, Moka san. Green's nervous, but it's not really that serious. Don't worry. How could you say that, Mayuri? What I'm about to speak of is on the same level as a final battle with the organization. Hell, it'd be no exaggeration to say that it will change the fate of our very world. Is that serious? Wait, don't tell me that they figured out that I'm a spy. No, that's impossible. I've been careful about being followed, and I know for a fact that I haven't leaked any information. That said, lab memes are almost impossible to read. It's entirely plausible that they've slowly amassed information without my having realized it. They might have done a full background check on me. Come on, Ocarine! You're the leader, aren't you? Then come on, you gotta be super cool and just say it! I don't need to be told that! Very well. Watch me. Ahem. So, uh, training finger. Did something happen between you and Kurisu yesterday? Huh? All the tension in my body is released. Not only is the topic completely different from what I expected, I'm also surprised that Okabe of all people is bringing this up. If I'm being perfectly honest, Kurisu seemed very gloomy when she showed up at the lab yesterday. But when I asked her about it, she said you suddenly ran off in the middle of a conversation you two were having. She's worried she might have might have upset you. I see. Sorry for worrying you. I promise you, Makase san is just misunderstanding things. I've been feeling under the weather since yesterday morning. I managed to make it to the front of the lab, but that was as far as I could get. I ended up going home. Makase san didn't do anything wrong. 
Okay. I'm literally right here. Why send an email? Why well, cause I was just a little embarrassed to talk about things like the face. Face is all. Just like you, Ocreen. Says who? Anyway. Hmm. I see. So that's what went down. I'll let her know. I'm sure she'll be relieved to hear it. My assistant sure is a timid one. He could stand to learn more from me. The courageous mad scientist standing against the organization all by himself. <laughs> You know, I don't know why I ran off yesterday. To be honest, I don't understand what I what it was I was feeling at the time. Even after I got home, my chest felt tight. Why? Why do I get this strange feeling every time I try to deceive the lab mems? I just want to talk to someone about it. But considering my position, I can't exactly do that without any of the people here at the lab. There's a limit to how far I can hide my identities around her. And if I tell them who I really am, I'd be returning FB. I also can't talk to her about this either. No, oh, I get it. I'm all alone right now. Can't tell the truth to anyone. I'm completely cut off. If had always been there for me, I could rely on her for any problems I had. My worries were dispelled a little thanks to talking to you yesterday. I really wanted to thank you. Also, you left pretty suddenly yesterday. Did I do something to offend you? I know I can be pretty harsh at times, and I sometimes hurt people without realizing it. If I did anything, please just tell me straight. I'm really happy that I was useful to you, Maxi-san. I don't know how much I can help, but I'd like to talk again, if that's okay with you. Molika. I'm really happy that I was useful to you, Maxi-san. I was feeling a little under the weather yesterday, so I went home. I was just talking to Okapikun and the others about that. Molika. Um, this one, both... You know, makes it clear that I'm not mad at her and also is like, hey, I'd like to build this relationship. So let's do that. Okay. I can't do that right now. There's not a single person I can call friend. I'm all alone. What's wrong, Training Finger? Yo, you okay? I snap back to my senses. Okabikun and Shina-san are both looking at me with concerned expressions. Sorry, I spaced out. Hey, hey, Moaka-san? Huh? Suddenly, Shina-san grabs my hand and looks directly at me. Um, kind of looks like you're worried about something sometimes. Hey, how green you are, Shining Finger. Even the slightest concern is enough to dull one's reflexes. I would know from my long years of experience fighting the organization. You should just let it all out before it leads to a fatal mistake. Shina-san glances at Okabikun as he laughs loudly, and turns back to me with a smile on her face. There's no way I can talk about this indescribable feeling of mine, not even if she smiles at me like that. I'm alone. I have to stay this way. I'm fine. Then, there actually is something I wanted to discuss. Um, do you know anything about dating men? I'm not saying I have someone in mind right now or anything, but it would be nice to prepare myself for after I graduate. I really appreciate some advice from a mature woman like you. Dating men, I don't really have any experience, so I doubt it can be of much use. But if there's someone you like, you should confess your feelings to them. Moaka. Someone in mind, wait, are you into Okabekun? You can be really thick-headed. It must be rough, Maxi-san. Moaka. Open and honest communication is the foundation of a proper relationship. Not a proper relationship, a healthy relationship. That's the one. Proper can mean a great many different things. It's for the best. It should be, but then why? It's this feeling. Discomfort once again swirls around deep inside of my chest. It's so painful. Why does it hurt this much? Is it because I want to tell them everything? Even if that would mean betraying FB? I just don't know. I'm losing track of myself. Oh, okay. I guess it was all just a misunderstanding. Sorry. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not worried about anything. In a sense, smile is a little sadder than before. The pain in my chest continues to throb. How do I feel like this? FFB. He's the only one I need. I. What's happening to me? Instead of keeping tabs on the lab, I've been assigned to a different mission today. Being a low-level agent means I haven't been given any details. The recovery team is coming, so guide them to the building in Akihabara. That's my orders. Incidentally, 
Seems the scientist who fled from CERN has been hiding out in Akihabara. Is that really a coincidence? What if he knows about Okapika and intends to leak information to their lab? Hey, you. The man comes out from the scientist's hideout and stands in front of me. I flexibly take a step back. The man has a distinctively different air from the other rounders I know. At a glance, I can tell he has a muscular body and sharp eyes. He's fluent in Japanese, but his tall stature and blonde hair clearly indicates that he's a foreigner. Do you have come from CERN headquarters? Take this to the south exit of Otsuka Station. That's all. No questions. Don't look inside, either. The man hands me a briefcase. Naturally, I'm not authorized to check inside. Not that I need to. So, how are we going to clean this up? Disposing of the corpse will be particularly troublesome. Corpse. Definitely just said corpse. I already had a vague idea that this might be the case. The people in front of me killed the scientist. Quietly swallowed down my nervousness. It's fine. I'll leave the cleanup to that team. That team? Who are they talking about? B mentioned something about this too. I wonder what it all means. It seems CERN's influence has already extended into the core of most nations. CERN can assassinate people and easily make it as though they never even existed. It's so terrifying that I really don't want to think about it anymore. Everyone, withdraw individually. Rendezvous at point gamma at 0308. Jesus Christ. 0830 hours on the 12th. After the rounders disappear, I walk toward the station. I need to hand the recovered briefcase to another rounder. I have to hurry and get this over with. I have no idea what's inside the briefcase. The faint scent of blood is, what's, is still in the air. After going to Otsuka Station, a woman I don't recognize greets me. I hand the briefcase to her and finish my job. I think I catch her saying, I receive the documents, and to her cell phone as she leaves. I pretend not to hear. This has nothing to do with a low-level agent like myself. Escape scientist's name, names of the rounders, the name of the woman who took the briefcase. My mission ended before I could learn any of these things. I feel a little nauseous. I'm in such a bad mood that I just want to go home and sleep. Upon returning to Akihabara, I bump into two familiar faces. Ah, it's Moka-san! Yo! Yes, and Maxi-san. Two of them greet me as soon as they spot me. Hello. We're about to head to the lab. You're coming too, right? Huh? Sheesh, Okape is such a hopeless bum. How can he send out a group message like that without even considering what the rest of us might be doing? Message from okape -kun? I hardly opened my cell phone. You've got mail. That's right. I have a message from him. I turned my phone off during the mission, so I didn't notice. Oh, I didn't get a chance to react. Hey, moka -san, since we're all here, let's go together! Let's read it real quick. The 1978th Roundtable Conference will be held at the lab today at 1900 hours. This will be an important gathering that will decide the very future of our very lab. Please participate if possible. Mad Scientist, Hoin Kyoma. Huh? But... Ah, we gotta get going. We're gonna be late. Come on, let's go! Um, what? Tina san takes my hand and basically drags me to the lab. Alright, looks like you're all here. Look at you, Mr. High and Mighty. You do realize you were the last one to arrive, yeah? Late to boot. I, I wasn't late. But you know the most ancient of rules, the leading role always must arrive fashionably late. This is all just a pre-established harmony, the choice of Steinsgate. Excuses, excuses. So where's everyone else? Ah, part-time warrior has an errand to run, Ferris has work, and Rukuko has to help at the shrine. Unbelievable, right? Meaning it's going to decide the very fate of our world. It's not their fault. It's being came out of nowhere. Ex exactly. None of us has as much free time as you do, Ocarine. I shall feel a little sick. Enough. Let us commence the 2357th Roundtable Conference. Didn't your email say the 1978th? Ah, my assistant, you must learn not to sweat the details. Excuse me? Glad to see this already turning into a trash fire like always. Thank you very much, Joe. Who are we talking about today? It always sounds like nonsense to my Ishii. Ahem, my apologies. I was a bit derailed thanks to my assistant. Shut your trap. Anyway, today's topic. 
Do we continue our research on the time machine or not? I'd like to focus our attention on discussing this most important of issues. Couldn't have asked for a better chance. Contact FB to let her know that the Roundtable Conference has begun. Delivered the cargo. I delivered the cargo. Need to attend a conference at the lab now. Topic is whether or not to continue with the time machine research. Please advise. She immediately responds. It is a good opportunity. Do whatever you can to derail the conversation and move in a direction that results in their ceasing their time machine research. I'm not very good at talking in these sorts of situations. These are FB's orders. I have to try. I have to do my best. If I can skillfully manipulate the conversation, I can stop their research. I think we should keep going. That's right. Akase san is trying to advance the time machine research, machine research for her father. She's not just going to give up. Oh, what's the turn of events, Christina? You were totally skeptical about our work not too long ago, were you not? Well, call me Christina. Well, either way, let's just put that aside for now. Okay, so then why do you think we should continue our work? Pure sense of curiosity would be my first reason. Second reason would be to observe the time paradoxes caused by our DML experiments. The conversation advances into more technical details. If I don't jump in now, Makase san is going to get what she wants. I have to enter the conversation. Um, can I say something? Besides, as long as we have the ability to send D mail, we can change the past at will. What reason do we have to fear time paradoxes? The issue is whether or not we'd even realize that a paradox occurred. That's why we need to be more cautious going forward. Contradicting yourself. Sounding more and more like you're in favor of calling it quits. Weren't you the first one to say that we should keep going? I didn't say anything about stopping. All I'm saying is that we need to be more careful. Your thoughtless experiments are too dangerous to. This is bad. There are no openings. Which means... Have a moment? There's something I want to ask. Have a moment? Moe. That's why I have reading Steiner. No worries. No worries? We don't even have proof that this ability of yours even exists. That's why I worry. Huh? I know I sent him an email. He's just ignoring it? Maybe he just didn't notice. Try it again. Hey! Look at me, Kuhn. There's something I want to ask you. Have a moment. Please notice this email. Moka. You're right, I have no evidence. The only thing I have is my perspective. Then why not think of a different approach? For example... He's not looking. Look at Bakun's too engrossed in the argument to check his phone. Which I do. At this rate, I'm going to fail FB's mission. Hey, Magathan! Are you okay? Looks like you've been wanting to say something to Okarine for a while. Yes, son whispers to me. I guess she must have noticed me struggling to enter the conversation. I, I'm fine. Maybe she thinks you should say what you want to say. I don't want to interrupt them. She then flashes me a smile before boldly butting into the middle of their heated debate. Hey, both of you! My Mary, what's up? I came out of nowhere. What's wrong? Aka wants to say something, maybe she thinks you should listen to her. We're both so excited talking to each other that you didn't even notice that Maka san wants to talk. Hey, is that true? Sorry, Maka san. Guess I got a little carried away. Very well, Shining Finger. We shall listen to your method of bringing chaos into this world. Now speak! Shia san smiles. Isn't that great, Maka san? Thank you. Shia san looks happy even though she had nothing to gain from doing that. I timidly bow my head to her. Once again, a tight pain runs through my chest. Am I really deceiving such kind, warm people? I know it's my mission, but... Mokasan? What's wrong? You look pale. I suddenly remember my earlier mission. My life taken so easily. The murder treated as though it never happened. 
Now that this is my mission, I might have to do to these people what we did to that scientist. I need to go get some air. Hey, what's wrong? Didn't you have something to say? I don't have any right to be with Okabikun and the others. I ran out of the lab and aimlessly wandered the streets of Akihabara. Hida-san. Maybe she said something to make you mad? Are you still in Akihabara? I'm okay, something kind of sad happened, but it has nothing to do with anyone in the lab. We'll come back soon, so don't worry. Yeah, I'm still in Akihabara. I'll come back soon, so don't worry. Uh... Uh... I guess this one is more correct? Okay. I could have just gone straight home, but I feel like I'd truly be betraying the lab ems if I did. Either way, I'm going to be betraying them. Ah, there she is! Huh? Oh, that was my eerie. What a relief! There you are! What are you two doing here? Yes, and makise san catch up to me, out of breath. Well, when you suddenly ran out of the lab, we got worried and went looking for you. I'll mail Okabe and Hashida and let them know we found Mo Moka san. That way they can head back to the lab. I'm sorry. You have nothing to apologize for. He's right. I've done the same thing before. Usually because of Okabe. Again, they're being so kind to me again. They don't suspect me in the least. So friendly to me. Why? Huh? Why are you all so nice to someone like me? I'm... I... I can't say it. There's no way I could say it. Concerned by my sudden silence, Sheena san speaks to me in a gentle voice. Moka san, you don't have to ask why. You don't need a reason. We're all MMs, right? Got that right. We're lab MMs and allies. But I haven't done a single useful thing for the lab. How could I ever call myself one of your allies? I think about FB. Recently, I haven't been useful to her either means I'll be abandoned. And if I'm abandoned, I won't be able to be their friend. Moka-san! Shina-san crouches down in order to align her gaze with mine. Maybe she doesn't think that's what makes people allies. Huh? I raised my head. They're all smiling at me. Being allies was only about common interest or utility value I'd have left the lab a long time ago. Yep, yep! Maybe she isn't useful to Okreen or Christian's research either. But if it's not about common interests, then what's the point of being a lab mem? There's no point in chasing after me. Why do it? Um, well, you see. That's what friends do, moka -san. Friends? Mm-hmm. I think the best word to describe us lab mems is friends. A relationship that isn't about common interests, but just being together. It's a friend. I've never had any relationships beyond the ones I have with the rounders or FP. So the word feels almost dreamlike to me. Friends, I'm envious. I don't know, moka -san. What? You're Lamum too, you know, which makes you one of our friends. I'm your friend? Yep, we're friends. Heck, we wouldn't be so desperate to find you if we weren't. Oh, moka -san, are you crying? What? Wait, wait a sec, why? Did I say something wrong? No, not at all. I'm just happy. Moka-san. Yes, and softly takes my hand in hers. It's more warm and gentle than anything I've ever felt before. It surprised me when you started crying out of nowhere. Sorry. Up until now, I'd only ever saw value in my own existence through how useful I was. I knew that FB was using me, but I didn't resent her for it. If anything, the fact that I could stay connected to her by being used was comforting to me. I never thought there'd be people out there willing to accept me for me. I'm so happy. I feel that way from the very bottom of my heart. Here, you can use this handkerchief if you want. Thank you, Shino san. You're friends, so you can call me by my name. Your name? Yep, I want you to call me by my name. Your name. I never called someone by their first name before. It's not outside of emails. It was always just too embarrassing. Um, my hairy son. That's me. Gina, I mean, my hairy son raises her hand in an exaggerated manner and mischievously smiles. 
Monk, I said finally call me by my first name. Awesome! A carefree smile fills my chest with a deep warmth. I never knew friends could be such a warm thing. Anyhow, we should get back to the lab. Are you sure that Oka and Darakun are super worried? They have made my first friends ever. They're also warm hearted. Danger is quickly approaching them. Only when I look back at how I'm the one who brought this upon them, do I realize just how terrifying the organization I'm a part of truly is. Well. Now. This seems like a good place to cut it. That seems like an active cliffhanger. Like, that is where it should be cut. And I'm excited to see where this goes. I don't know if this is going to end the same way uh, that most Alpha World lines do. Or if she's going to do something to disrupt everything. I don't know. But I'm really excited to find out. And I hope you are too. So thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Steinsgate, Linear Bounded Phenogram. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.